Um, the actual first person to talk about uh, the fact that the universe had to begin at a finite time in a singularity is Stephen Hawking, uh, who made some singularity theorems with Roger Penrose. But the interesting thing is Stephen Hawking has also argued, as in fact we now know given quantum gravity, that universes can spontaneously appear. In fact, one of the things about quantum, quantum mechanics is nothing, not only can nothing become something, nothing always becomes something. Nothing is unstable. Nothing will always produce something in quantum mechanics. And if you apply quantum mechanics to gravity, you can show that it's possible that space and time themselves can come into existence when nothing existed before. So that's not a problem. Dr. Price appeals to Stephen Hawking's model. Hawking's model involves an absolute beginning of the universe. It has a beginning of the, of the universe, though it doesn't have a beginning point of infinite density. He says, but it can come into being out of nothingness because nothing is unstable. This is the grossly misleading use of nothingness for describing the quantum vacuum, which is empty space filled with vacuum energy. It is a rich physical reality described by physical laws and having a physical structure. If a religious person were to so seriously misrepresent a scientific theory as this, he would be accused of deliberate distortion and abuse of science, and I think rightly so. What the quantum vacuum is, is a roiling sea of energy. It is not nothing. As Dr. Uh, uh, Krauss himself has said, and I quote, by nothing, I don't mean nothing. Nothing isn't nothing anymore in physics. Empty space is not empty. Nothing is really a bubbling, boiling brew of virtual particles. So the key role in this theory of inflation is played by a very peculiar form of matter, which is called false vacuum. Um, vacuum is what you get when you remove all particles, right? So this is just empty space. So I tried to depict it in this view graph. There is nothing there. But um, for a physicist, uh, vacuum is very different from nothing. Um, it is a physical object which uh, can have energy, pressure, and also can exist in different energy states. Um, the properties of elementary particles, like protons, electrons, uh, are determined by the properties of the vacuum. So in vacuum, if vacuum is in, were in a state different from what we have here now, the masses of the particles and their other properties would be very different. Well, you know, that's become a big, a big question. What is nothing? I've, and in the early book, I mean, I've been debating lately with some theologians and philosophers who I point out are, are experts at nothing. And uh, um, they... Um, they've been wondering about whether empty space is nothing and I think it, it it's a version of nothing if you actually thought of what people for thousands of years thought, thought nothing was it's sort of an eternal empty void as the Bible might have said and um, and that's a good approximation of nothing of course in the modern with our modern understanding of physics we now understand that nothing is actually quite exciting it's full of it's it's actually quite complicated nothing and I and you, you, as you said it perfectly you get rid of, you take a region of space, get rid of all the particles, all the radiation, so there's no particles there, but it's still a boiling, bubbling brew of virtual particles popping in and out of existence at a time scale so short you can't measure them. If you put energy in empty space, it's gravitationally repulsive. It's not attractive. It's, it's, it, it, any student of physics has always learned that gravity sucks. It always pulls, it never pushes. But if you put energy in empty space, it's actually like anti-gravity. And we look at the universe, the expansion of the universe is actually speeding up. And that tells us that empty space has energy. So it tells us that nothing, that kind of nothing, has energy. And that tells us that nothing is far more interesting than we thought it was. And then the next question you might ask, which you may or may not ask, is, well, is, you know, if, if it really has energy, is that really nothing? Sure. And, and the answer is maybe. Um, and it, but... 
I don't want to where you want to head, but in fact, oh. I, in the in the book, I try and make it quite clear mm -hmm. that well, okay, so that kind of nothing is quite interesting because in fact. What we, what we now know is that that kind of nothing is unstable. If you have purely empty space with no particles in it, the laws of quantum mechanics and relativity when you combine them with gravity will tell us that if you wait long enough, it'll fill up with stuff. And so nothing, one of the simplest answers to the question, why is there something rather than nothing, is that nothing is unstable. If you wait long enough, nothing will always become something. And you don't need any supernatural shenanigans. The laws of physics will do it. And that, to me, is profoundly fascinating. But people would point out, well, that's not nothing because you still have space. Sure. Where did the space come from? Well, it turns out, if you then apply quantum mechanics to gravity itself, gravity, general relativity tells us that space responds to the presence of matter and energy. And if you make that a quantum mechanical theory, then there are not just fluctuations of particles within space, there's fluctuations of space itself. So universes could pop in and out of existence, just like particles could pop in and out of existence in the universe. And in fact, you can create whole universes from nothing. No space, no time. It seems to me that's a much better definition of nothing, but again, it doesn't satisfy some people. Well, okay, so, so if you've got a space where universes can pop into existence, albeit for a short yeah. time or whatever, um, some presumably not for a short time, some for a long time, like our universe. In fact, if you ask what are the characteristics of a universe that popped into existence from nothing that would last long enough so you could have an Auckland Writers' Festival, <laughs> the characteristics of such a universe are exactly the characteristics of the universe we measure. That doesn't prove we came from nothing, but it's strongly suggestive, at least to me. This is the grossly misleading use of nothingness for describing the quantum vacuum, which is empty space filled with vacuum energy. It is a rich physical reality described by physical laws and having a physical structure. If a religious person were to so seriously misrepresent a scientific theory as this, he would be accused of deliberate distortion and abuse of science, and I think rightly so.